Well, it looks like Tesla is going to miss quarter two consensus estimates on production and delivery due to the Shanghai shutdown. What is that going to mean for Tesla stock in the short term and the long term? Also, Elon Musk responded to a clip of Dave Lee and James Dalma talking about video clip length. What might this have to say about data sets and how Tesla is collecting data and the import of this to full self-driving beta? Let's take a look. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, we're gonna start with the quarter two delivery estimates, which are obviously going to fall short now. If you don't know, Shanghai has been shut down and partially reopened for a couple of months now. So I think they're still only running one shift there. So obviously, as opposed to three shifts that they were running before, they're not producing as many cars and also they were locked down. So there was a period of time where they weren't delivering anything at all. Anyway, the consensus estimates have gone down from around 310,000 units delivered down to 250. 50,000 for the quarter ending at the end of June, so just a little over a month from now. So obviously this is going to be a gigantic reduction from quarter one production and deliveries, both of which were over 300,000 units. So we've got a big reduction in units produced and obviously units sold because you can't sell what you don't have and Tesla really doesn't have a backlog so they can't sell their back catalog basically. So what does this mean for Tesla stock in the short term? I'm not a financial analyst, obviously do your own research, so these are just the ramblings of my thinking, but it seems relatively obvious that that's going to have a negative impact on Tesla's stock. I, I mean, who knows? Tesla announces blow away quarters and their stock goes down. So who knows, it could go up based on the fact that they've got fewer cars being produced and delivered, I, I, who knows? But the likelihood is that the stock is going to go down either now as people start to take account of that or after the Q2 delivery news comes out in early July. The expectation would be that there will be a depression of Tesla stock. Now, of course, if you've been following the gigantic Elon Musk Twitter acquisition saga that has been going on, that has also had a depressing effect on Tesla stock. And I mean depressing both in terms of financially and also in terms of emotionally. It's an awful lot of stress on those of us who care about Elon Musk and Tesla and the stock doing well, et cetera. So, you know, there's a lot of factors going on. Obviously the war in Ukraine has had a very big impact on it. The general depression of the tech stock sector, et cetera. But you know, last week actually things went up last week. So it's, it's a very crazy thing in the short term. So in the short term, my expectation, again, not financial analyst here, is that there's going to be a negative effect on Tesla stock in the next six weeks or so. And it might be priced in in the near future, like we could see on Tuesday. Today's a holiday for those who are not in the United States. So this is a Monday, it's Memorial Day. So happy Memorial Day to everybody in the US. But anyway, the stock market in the US will reopen tomorrow and there could very well already be negative pressure on Tesla's stock. What it means to the long term is really nothing. <laughs> I guess it could mean a buying opportunity because the stock could go down. I mean, heck, we could even see like $600 or something like that reappear again at when all of this stuff is taken into account. It's a very weird thing. Tesla's fundamentals are excellent. Obviously, the situation in Shanghai is not fantastic, but it's going to get dealt with over time and it's not going to have a long term effect on Tesla. It's a short term one. So, the long term effect on Tesla stock is really, I don't believe it's going to be very much. Again, not a financial analyst, do your own research, but I think that it will not have a great deal of effect on Tesla stock over the next two to three years, let's say, that sort of time horizon. So if it goes down substantially, then, you know, that could be a very good buying opportunity. So anyway, make of this what you will, but I expect to see some sort of negative impact in the near term, but then not much effect in the long term in the two to three year time horizon. And on to more interesting news in my mind, because I care more about the technology than the stock prices ultimately. Elon Musk responded to James Dalma and Dave Lee's conversation, specifically the clip about labeling 180,000 video clips. James had estimated 30 seconds for these clips and Elon Musk responded in a tweet that that wasn't quite accurate. Elon said, our video clips are usually shorter than 30 seconds, but the overall point made by James is accurate. Tesla is probably labeling more images per week than any other project ever done and our rate of labeling is increasing rapidly. 
So interestingly, I did a video between the James Dalma, Dave Lee conversation and Elon Musk's tweet. You can check it out right here. Came out yesterday. It, it fit right in that range between when the conversation happened and when Elon tweeted about it. But basically, I talked about how the effect of this gigantic data set is very important for Tesla and the full self-driving beta and the ability to chase those nines that it needs to. And interestingly enough, I believe it was from Andre Carpathia. I'm not positive about this, but I I had heard 10 second video clips. So my understanding is more or less what they're looking at is 10 second video clips. That's a lot of time, especially if you're driving at relatively high speeds. A lot of things happen in 10 seconds. So let's just take 10 seconds as opposed to 30. Elon doesn't specify this, he just says shorter, but I'm, I'm pretty convinced it's more or less 10 seconds that these video clips last. So that means instead of talking about one and a half billion frames of video, we're talking about 500 million frames of video instead. This doesn't really matter that much. We're still on the same order of magnitude. <laughs> and again, remember, this is 180,000 video clips or somewhere around 500 million video frames that's being utilized specifically to tweak a setting to adjust for a very specific circumstance. This is not Tesla's overall data set. This is just what they labeled for a very specific problem area that they're dealing with. So overall, we're looking at tens to hundreds to thousands of billions of video frames that they're utilizing to do all this testing. This is the reason why Dojo is so important to the future of Tesla. It's not that they can't do all of this training over time, it's just that they need to do it as quickly as possible because they have so many frames of data. Now, of course, my assumption is that what they're doing is they're throwing away a lot of stuff that works well. So originally they took in anything, right? If you're driving 100 miles, they're gonna take most of that information and suck it in and use it to train the neural networks as well as they possibly can for a general sense. But now that they're getting more specific, they can throw away a lot of this other information and they can kind of overfit to these edge case pieces of data and tweak things around. Now of course they have to be careful that they don't have like driving down a straight road with no traffic the car suddenly veers off or something like that. So they've got stuff in place to make sure that it doesn't regress in those areas but what they can do is they can focus and not use all of the data that they have. They can focus the data set to tweak these neural networks to be as accurate as possible for these specific instances. And of course the second part of Elon's tweet talks about how they're labeling more data than any project ever per week and that's accelerating. So part of what's going on here is they've got an auto labeling system that took them years to develop and get to be really good. It's very difficult to write this kind of thing to create these models to automatically label everything in a scene but once you get that a computer is you know tens of thousands of times at least faster than human beings. So this thing can label and label and label very, very rapidly and then humans only have to come in when probably the labeling networks have low confidence that they've labeled something properly. So what Elon's saying here is not only is Tesla labeling more stuff than anybody else right now and probably ever in history, they're actually increasing that lead. So they're getting better and better and better at it. So over time, they're going to be able to auto label more and more and more elements. Elements. All of this is just fantastic news for full self-driving. What it ultimately means is that they're going to be able to focus data on every single edge case that they need to over time, because even if it only happens one out of every 100,000 miles or something, you've got so many cars on the road collecting data that you're able to get a reasonable data set. And of course they have a simulation engine if they need to use that as well, but they're collecting massive amounts of data that nobody else can have access to. And this is the reason why Tesla basically has to win full self-driving. If it's possible for full self-driving to be solved, Tesla's going to be the one that does it. Now, you know, there's not any guarantee. It's possible that full self-driving, that autonomous driving is just too difficult a problem to solve completely. I don't believe that that's the case, but if anybody is going to be able to do it, Tesla's going to be able to do it, unless they're just completely wrong in how they're working on the whole thing. I don't think that's the case, but their data lead is so massive and their auto labeling lead is so massive that nobody else can catch up because basically they have this gigantic lead and they're increasing that lead over time. So in brief, Elon's tweet is really, really good news. And I love the fact that they've got this auto labeling system working and it's getting better and better and they're able to auto label more and more things every single week. All right, so overall, we've got an unfortunate dip in production and deliveries for quarter two, but on the positive end of things, full self-driving is still working fantastic. And Tesla is, you know, firing on all cylinders, very weird metaphor for an electric car company, but anyway, they're firing on all cylinders, except in China where they're still getting things back on their feet again.
So I hope you found this episode fun and informative and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. It really does help out the channel and I thank you all so much. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla Bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.